Please, please punch. Oh, I'm sorry. Punch, <laughs> punch the button. Uh, I'm greatly honored to testify this important hearing on a subject which affects substantial proportion of the world population and which has great importance for public health. My full resume appears with my written testimony. I am a physician, board certified in epidemiology and public health. I am the director of the Cancer and Radiation Epidemiolo Epidemiology Unit at the Gertner Institute, affiliated to Tel Aviv University. I am involved in research and I advise the Chief Director of the Ministry of Health on health policy concerning radiation and cancer. I am currently engaged in collaborative studies of brain cancer funded among others by the NIH and the European Community. For over 10 years I have been participating in research on the risk of tumors associated with cell phones initially as the principal investigator of the Israeli part of the Interphone study the largest collaborative study conducted today on this issue. And currently I lead the Israeli team of another study also funded by the EU uh, on cell phones and children called Moby Kids. In 2008, we published findings from the Israeli finding of the Interphone study suggesting a risk of salivary gland are located right here. Salivary gland tumors among people who used cell phones for relatively long periods uh, when phone was usually held on the same side of the head where the tumor developed and when use was relatively heavy. The Israeli Ministry of Health adopted the precautionary principle that briefly says better safe than sorry. It published recommendations for several simple and low cost measures. This is really important. The measures are very simple and very low cost that should be taken to reduce exposure. Uh, I believe that uh, the clever engineers that are out there in the industry can very easily find um, creative solutions for that. These measures include speakers, earphones, hands-free devices when driving, and as you said before, reducing the use of cell phones in areas where reception is weak. Special attention was given to children because we have many proofs that the, child, the children population is specifically susceptible to uh, carcinogenic effects. As said here before, guidelines have also been published in other countries such as France, uh, Finland and uh, Canada and others. Now our findings are in line with some other studies of brain and acoustic neuroma, these are um, uh, the, the nerves that controls hearing, that demonstrated an increased risk with more than 10 years of use and use on the same side of the head as the tumor. However, there is a debate among scientists, and this is where we are today, whether these observations are true or stem from methodological issues of epidemiological studies in general and those on cell phones specifically. Uh, I also appreciate these methodological um, uh, issues. I suspect the results, but I respect the results primarily, the results that we have. I would like to explain one important point which illustrates the limitations of the existing data. I think it's an important point. During uh, a duration of at least 10 years is the minimal time needed uh, for solid cancer studies. In the case of brain tumors, uh, it may reach even 30 to 40 years. For example, the atomic bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki occurred in 1945, while the first report demonstrating brain tumors among the survivors was not published until 1994, 50 years later. Um, for leukemia, it was published um, uh, during the, the 50s, and for other solid tumors, the, it, it began to show in the 60s. Since widespread cell phone use began only in the mid-90s, the follow-up period in most published studies is only about 10 years, which is insufficient to detect an effect. Since then, the amount of time people spend on cell phones has increased dramatically. There is a consensus that ad additional research is needed. As the United States has always been a leader in medical research, your making this topic a high priority would advance progress in this field. A multidisciplinar, multinational effort built on previous research is essential. I think this is very important not to invent the wheel, but to learn from the past experience. There are now 4 billion people using this technology, including children. Consequently, even if a small risk for an individual exists, the great number of users could eventually result in a great damage. Until definite answers are available, some public health measures with special emphasis on children should be instituted. 
Preventive steps used for other technologies, such as driving, provide a good example. We all use cars, but in order to reduce the risks of accidents, legislation was passed concerning the use of seat belts, airbags, speed limits, minimum age of driving, uh, and car tests. I think it's exactly the same thing. I believe that cell phone technology, which has many advantages, is here to stay. However, the question, as far as I'm concerned, the question that needs to be answered is not whether we should use cell phones, but how we should use them. And that's very easy to address, I think. It is my hope that the issue raised in this hearing will encourage you to promote research and take actions to ensure the safe and responsible use of cell phones. I would like to thank Dr. Debra Davis, uh, who invited me here, and I would like to thank you for your attention and for raising this issue. Thank you very much for coming a great distance and thank you for your testimony.